this is Kim, and you are watching ECT TV episode 18. I'm so glad you're here with me this week. Um, today you are with me in my workspace, so um, I hope it's not too distracting. You'll see my supplies behind me. Um, I wanted to start out today with a creativity booster. So a creativity booster is something I have in my e-course, Rediscover Your Creativity Through Making Jewelry. Um, and each week I have what I call a creativity booster. And it's basically something to kind of get your creativity flowing again. Um, in the course, um, there's all kinds of different things. And I'll, I'll put a link um, below the video so you can go and check it out if you're interested. But today I just have kind of a small one um, to help you. So if you're feeling a little bit less than creative, um, less than creative um, or you're feeling a little bit stagnant in your jewelry designs um, or you're kind of bored with the supplies you have, something like that, um, this is a great idea. So it's spring here where I live. Um, it's very hot so it feels like summer today. Um, and springtime brings a lot of flea markets. So I love flea markets. I love when you go and there's all kinds of people selling antiques and vintage stuff um, and you can like, I love when they have the bins you can kind of dig through. So one thing that can really help your creativity is to, to do something different, go into a different environment. So if you go to a flea market, it might be different for you. But on top of that, you can start looking through people's stuff um, that they're selling and look for things you can use in your jewelry designs. Or if they have antique or vintage jewelry, you can look at those pieces for inspiration. Um, you can look for pieces they have for sale that maybe you don't like the design, but you like components of the necklace for example, um, maybe it has really cool beads that you could take apart and use in your jewelry designs. Maybe you'll find a bunch of buttons like I did. And I'll share a little close, more close up when we get to the tutorial section of um, this episode to show you what I did get. Um, so my favorite flea market is Shucks Grove and I know there's a few of you who live in my area so I'm sure you know Shucks Grove and the great part about Shucks Grove is that um, it's in the woods so on top of it you're kind of in nature you're looking through people's vintage and old stuff um, you're finding rusty old keys which I love um, people who are selling button collections and I know I sell buttons but I still buy them <laughs> too um, to you so just going somewhere new and kind of immersing yourself in some like cool stuff different stuff will really help you get more creative so you'll either find some supplies to use um, and you don't have to know exactly what you're going to use it for when you buy it. Sometimes I buy things I have no idea and people ask me why did you buy that and I'll say I'm not exactly sure um, but I'm probably going to make jewelry with it. Um, maybe you won't find anything to buy but you spent your time kind of digging through stuff and that got your creativity going. Maybe you saw some jewelry you thought was cool. That sort of thing. So that's my tip for you is to go check out a flea market and um, let me know what happened. Did you get inspired? Did you find some cool stuff? Um, I'd love to hear what, what you did. Now we're going to move on to the tutorial section of our episode today. And if you've been watching this video series, several episodes I did a whole episode on um, a few different button tutorials different things you could make with buttons um, and one of those things was a stretch button bracelet so if you're interested in that I would suggest to go back to that episode um, but today we're going to be making a button charm bracelet so you're gonna need your buttons some jump rings um, 
chain nose pliers, maybe a pair of bent nose pliers, a toggle clasp, or any kind of clasp. And I will meet you at my workbench and I'll show you how to make the bracelet. So, as promised, I'm going to show you what I got at the flea market. Um, first, I got these sets of buttons, um, and they're both kind of a flower shape. These are really cute, like a rose color, um, and these are older, Ooh, made in Italy. How exciting, and these ones are made in the United States. Um, so, I got those, and then I got kind of three bags of buttons in different shades. Um, often I buy buttons all kind of mixed up in a big huge bag so as soon as I saw these little bags of colors um, separated I was like thought I hit the jackpot like somebody already separated these out for me. And so I'm going to show you how to make a button bracelet with these uh, buttons. Um, I think I might choose to make the blue and the yellow kind of make a bright, colorful bracelet. Okay, let's get started. First, let me show you what you're going to need. Um, you're going to need buttons, obviously. And just kind of a little note, um, you know, buttons are all different kinds of sizes and varieties. So what you'll probably want to use is something more of a kind of smaller or maybe this is kind of more medium size. These big ones um, are not great for the technique I'm going to show you anyway because we're just going to add jump rings. So the jump ring has to be able to go in a hole and you know go around all the way around and it has to fit in the jump ring. And you can use different size jump rings so um, that helps. And it kind of doesn't matter if you use these sort of shank buttons or the ones with holes or if it has four holes or if it has only two. Um, any of them are fine. Um, you might want to stick to a certain color palette. So I'm thinking about using these kind of uh, bluish, tealish, greenish buttons along with yellow. Um, or you might just want to mix it up and make it really colorful. So, you know, it's up to your you. It's your bracelet. Um, you will need chain. Um, I got this chain from Fusion Beads. It's 5.5 millimeter silver plated curb link chain if you're interested. Um, you need a clasp. Um, you can use a lobster clasp or a toggle clasp. Um, of course make your own clasp, whatever you want. Um, this is really cute. I love these clasps with the little flower. I got this from Happy Mango Beads. Um, you're going to need jump rings. Um, and these are silver plated jump rings. Um, these are 9 millimeter. Um, I got those at Michael's. Um, this is all silver plated. Uh, the the clasp is pewter, um, the chain and the links are silver plated. You can use whatever metal you prefer, of course. And then as far as tools, you'll need wire cutters just to cut your chain. And then you'll need two pairs of pliers. Um, you'll need chain nose. And then I highly recommend bent nose pliers for opening jump rings, but really two pair of any pliers will work, um, except not round nose pliers because they'll kind of leave a mark on your jump rings that you do not want there. So that is all you need for the button charm bracelet. Now, to get started, you can actually pick out your buttons and, you know, create a design if you like, you know, decide exactly how the buttons are going to go. Um, or you can just go with the flow, and I'm kind of going to kind of do that. I'm kind of just going to do every other button, uh, the other color, and um, just design as I go along. Now, depending on the size of your buttons, um, you may need to use a different size jump ring. Um, uh, I'm using 9 millimeters 
you can find bigger ones. You may need smaller ones. Seven millimeter would probably work for a, a lot of the buttons I have here as well, like these smaller ones. Um, but I'm going to just mainly use these nine millimeter jump rings um, just for consistency. But if you find that they're not working and you need bigger ones, and you really want to use those buttons that you picked out that aren't fitting, then get a bigger jump ring. So the main skill that you need for this bracelet is opening jump rings. So I am going to start out by showing you how to open jump rings. Um, and I like to ma open, you know, basically all the jump rings you need for a project at one time so you don't have to keep opening them as you go along. Um, so to open a jump ring, there is a wrong and right way. Um, I know a lot of people do it the wrong way, so I'm going to show you the right way. Um, so first you want to find the opening in your jump ring. And there'll be like a small little opening. And then you just position your pliers on either side of that opening. Like so. Um, you'll see these bent nose pliers are great for opening jump rings and now you're going to open the jump ring now you're not going to open it like this you're going to go forward with one set of pliers and back with the other set of pliers so one away from you one toward you and just open up the jump ring um, it will maintain a circle but it will just be open so I'll show you just like that and then you'll see it's open but it's still a circle so that's how you open a jump ring um, let me show you the wrong way so you have a better understanding um, a lot of people when they're first starting out especially try to open up a jump ring by pulling it apart and you'll see this is kind of more of a horseshoe and not a circle anymore um, you don't want that because getting it back together again is close to impossible um, perfectly. And then you'll see this is no longer a circle. And you do not want that. You want a circle. So, and then I'll show you how to close it. Um, so, of course, this will be after you put the button on and attach it to the chain. Um, and you just do it the exact opposite way. And I like to go back and forth a few times um, to make sure that the ends meet up exactly. And you will sometimes hear and usually feel it kind of click right into place when you do that. And then, I don't know, I often just kind of take my pliers, go to the top, and just make sure it's closed securely. So that is how you open and close a jump ring. Alright, so now that you know how to open a jump ring, um, just go ahead and open a whole bunch of them. Um, I don't usually count exactly how many I'm going to need, but I just sort of keep opening them until I'm sick of opening them <laughs> and then move on. So go ahead and just open up a bunch of jump rings and we'll get started with the fun part, um, adding the buttons to the bracelet. Alright, so now we need to cut our chain to the right length. And I, what I usually like to do for myself, um, I like my bracelets, maybe you can see this one, to be relatively loose. This one's maybe a little looser than I like. Um, so what I usually do um, when I'm cutting chain is to measure around my bracelet, or around my wrist, I'm sorry, tightly. So the the chain goes tightly around my wrist. And then I cut the chain in that spot. And take this piece off. So I like my bracelets to be loose. So when I add the clasp, it will be the right size. Now, if you prefer to have, you know, more control over your bracelet or you prefer to have your bracelet fit more snugly, then I suggest you take 
uh, a tape measure, or if you have a tape measure, take like a piece of string or something, uh, measure around your wrist for how exactly you want it to fit, and then see how long it is. And then get your clasp and measure it. Subtract the length of the clasp from the length that you want your perfect bracelet to be. And then that is how long you should cut your chain to. Okay, so we have our chain, we have our open jump rings, and we have our piles of buttons. <laughs> so we can start making the bracelet. It, like I said, if you want to plan out your design, make sure you plan it out and then you can start adding your buttons to your chain. Now, I, there's two things that could happen here. Um, so you just hook your jump ring into the button, like so. Just pick one of the holes and put it through. And then you can just put it on your bracelet. And I tend to like to work from the middle out. And then at that point, you just can go ahead and close your jump ring. And that is one button. Now, the other thing that could happen is that the button fits perfectly into your jump ring. Um, but it closes very tightly around the button, so you can't actually get the chain in with it. So what I suggest doing in that case is just going ahead, closing the jump ring, and then taking another jump ring, add it to that jump ring, and add it to your bracelet. So just continue adding buttons to your bracelet. Um, you can add as many as you want. If you want it to be pretty like funky and full, just put a button on every single link and they'll kind of be layered on top of each other. Um, I'll show you at, as I go through here. Um, but if you prefer to have maybe a little bit more dainty bracelet that's not so full and chunky, um, you might want to just do it every third link you know, every other link, something like that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start adding my buttons and you do the same and then we'll finish up the bracelet. As you can see, I have placed a button on every single link of my bracelet and it kind of created this layered, full, kind of chunky, funky look. Um, if you prefer, like I said, you could make your bracelet a little more elegant or dainty. Um, and maybe you only want to put a, a button on every other link or even maybe every third or fourth link. So to finish off this bracelet, we just need to um, add our clasp. Um, I'm using a toggle clasp as I showed you. So I'll just take a jump ring and put it on each end of my bracelet. Um, I am just going to use 7 millimeter jump rings for that and you could probably just use 4 millimeter jump rings or you know just use the jump rings you've been using all along and that will be fine too and you just kind of do it in the same exact way that you added all of your buttons as well just you know open the jump ring put the clasp in and then put the end of the chain in and close your jump ring so that is the button charm bracelet um, and I hope you had fun. You can do this with all kinds of buttons, all kinds of colors, however you want to do it. Um, I just want to show you, I have some of the shank buttons on here, you know, four holes, two holes, every kind of button imaginable. I just sort of added on there with a jump ring. And I have a fun new bracelet to wear. Well, I hope 
this episode has inspired you to try some unconventional materials such as buttons and maybe you'll want to check out a flea market. I'd love to know if you did go to a flea market and what happened, what you found, um, or if you made this bracelet. So make sure to comment below or over on my blog and let me know what you're doing. Head over to KimberlyKohler.com to get the show notes on this video. You will get the tutorial in uh, photographic form, so you'll get step-by-step -step pictures of how to make this bracelet. If you sign up for my email newsletter while you're over there, you'll get all future episodes of ECT TV emailed directly to you, plus you get a PDF form so you can easily download and save the tutorial um, or print it for your workspace, I'd love if you'd subscribe to my channel. The e-course that I mentioned, Rediscover Your Creativity Through Making Jewelry, is on my website in the shop page. You can start it at any time. It's set up for six weeks um, and you'll automatically get emails each week to remind you of the next lesson. I also have an ebook, um, just the ebook form of that e course now. So head on over to my website and check it out. And I will see you next week.